Aloha, my friends, and welcome back to Maui Craft Kitchen. It seems like every time I hang some salami to dry, I get a few people asking me for my recipe. Well, it isn't just as easy as me giving you some ingredients and saying, make me some salami. So today, I'm going to show you what I do to make salami at home. Get ready for some porky goodness, because we're going to work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. A big mahalo to my buddy, Rod the camera guy. Now before we get started, we need to learn some stuff. Here I have 3000 grams of cubed pork shoulder. We are going to want to add some fat to it. I like to use pork belly to raise the fat. I use roughly 30% of the shoulder weight in pork belly. The piece of belly I had was 980 grams, close enough. So we have a total combined meat weight of 3,980 grams. To determine the total amount of salt needed, we will multiply the total meat weight, 3,980 grams, by 0.03 or 3% to get 119.4 total grams of salt. Next, we need to figure out how much curing salt we need. To do this, we multiply the total meat weight, 3,980, by 0.0025 or one quarter of 1% to get 9.95 grams. Now we subtract 9.95 from 119.4 to get the remaining amount of actual salt we need less the curing salt, so we stay at 3% salt. We need 109.45 grams of salt in addition to the 9.95 grams of curing salt to get our total salt weight of 119.4 grams. Next, we want to have 2.5% of our seasoning blend. So we will multiply the total meat weight, 3,980 grams, by 0 0.025 to get 99.5 grams of seasonings. Finally, I like to add 3% wine as well. Not only does the wine add flavor, it raises the acidity and makes it more difficult for bad bacteria to grow. 3% is the same as our total amount of salt, so we will need 119.4 grams of the wine of your choosing. Now that we know what to do, we are going to take our regular salt and mix it with our curing salt. This will ensure that we are getting an even distribution. Throw that directly over the meat, making sure to get everything out of the bowl. This mixture is a 50-50 blend of granulated garlic and black pepper. This blend could be anything you want it to be. I'm just using this one for the demonstration. Mix well until everything is thoroughly coated. Press the meat down in the container to remove any excess air. Cover the meat with plastic wrap, trying to press out any excess air that may get trapped in between. Cover the container and leave it in the fridge for 48 hours. The day before making the salami, I like to get the casing soaking. We are using beef middles. They come heavily packed in salt to preserve them. So we will just rinse them a few times and put them in fresh water to soak until salami day. Salami day is here and first we need to prepare the casings. I pre-cut my casings when I bought them. Yours may be longer. Just turn them inside out. We want to do this because these are intestines and I'd rather have the outside touching my meat just in case. Now because mine are pre-cut to fit in my curing fridge better, I need to tie off one end on every casing. 
Give yourself enough twine. If you go under and under again, it will hold itself down, making it easier to tie the securing knot. Flip the flap of casing in the opposite direction and tie the same knot. And then I'll flip the casing and do one more knot the same way. Finally, I make a little loop on the end for easier hanging. Go ahead and finish your other casings. Time to start grinding the meat. After it is all ground, you can add in other things. I like whole peppercorns in this style of salami. We will also add our wine now. Mix until everything is evenly dispersed and the consistency is where you like it. If you are using your meat grinder as your sausage stuffer, you will want to undermix it here. All right, now I will take the barrel of my sausage stuffer and start filling it. If you are using your meat grinder as your stuffer, just load up your hopper now. Now it is time to start stuffing those casings. Make sure to get the excess water out of the casing. Start cranking your machine until the meat just starts coming out of the end. Oop, there it is. Now slide your casing over, removing any excess air. An air bubble will form at the end. So we take our little sausage pricker and poke a few holes to let the air escape. There is no way around this next part. Just be sure to keep your comments clean if women and or children are around. Slowly start stuffing the salami. You will get faster with practice, but for now, just take your time. Keep just enough pressure on the casing so that the filling is solid, but not so much that you risk tearing it. It should slowly slide as you fill it. Stop with enough room at the end to tie the same knot we did before. Give it some more pricks all around to remove any air that may be trapped under the casing.
Finish the rest of your salami the same way. Once they are all finished, we are going to tie off the open end. Grab the open end firmly and pack everything down one last time. Give it a twist to hold it secure. Take your twine and tie the same knot as before with a loop on this side as well. Get as close to the meat as you can with the first knot. Finally, we'll give it one last pricking to ensure all the excess air has escaped. Repeat this with your remaining salami. Now we will trim up the excess twine and casing. Leave a little bit of excess casing because it will shrink as it dries. Hang them in your temperature controlled and humidity controlled curing chamber until they have lost about one third of their weight. Salami likes to stay between 43 to 61 degrees Fahrenheit with a humidity level between 70 and 85%. Every day during the first week of curing, I like to flip every salami. This makes them dry a lot more straight, which makes them easier to store and slice. And every day until they have fully cured, I will rotate them around the chamber to ensure even curing. Now, I hope that this helps to demystify making salami at home for you. Change your spices, switch the wine, and most of all, don't forget to keep having fun in the kitchen. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. Thank you all so much for watching. Many mahalos and much aloha.